all the ladies that are mothers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, mothers are very precious um, people. They're so mighty, so multi-talented. Um, all the degrees in the world can't um, compare to motherhood. <laughs> uh, that's an MD. <laughs> <laughs> the mother's doctorate hallelujah oh i see something so pretty coming up oh wow how beautiful oh thank you that's my son-in-law hey. oh they smell so beautiful oh aren't they beautiful but well, thank you i appreciate that <laughs> camera you're getting this right <laughs> it's so pretty Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, are we ready for the word? Yes, we are. Let your fingers do the walking because you know we go from the, all over the Bible. Amen? Amen. And you know me, my gifting is teaching. I'll take you all over the word and I'll do my very best to, um, to go through it in a, in a timely manner that you can remember, remember what is uh, being preached to you. Well, today, the title of my sermon is There's Hope in the way, in, in, uh, in parentheses, the way. You, you um, remember how the way was first um, spoken of was in, um, in Acts 9-2. We're going to go through that. But what I want to, I'm gonna, we're going to go through all of that about the way, but there's hope in the way. And um, let's start... Um, I'm going to start with this and end with Job 14, 9. Job, uh, excuse me, yeah. Job 14, 7 through 9. This has been in my heart for many years, decades, decades, hallelujah. There's a dear friend of ours, Johnny Height, and his wife that lived on, on a mountain of Canyon Lake. It overlooked everything. That... Um, they cut down a tree there, and uh, I remember um, uh, l l reading this scripture about, uh, about this tree. And so it, it means so much to me. But um, are we there yet? Job 14, 7? It says, for there is a hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout again and that its tender shoots will not cease. Hallelujah. And we'll go through the rest of that later. But the hope of the way is, is brought to you in an illustration of a tree. You know, we, um, we know that when you plant your trees by the river of water, it bears fruit. So along those lines, we're going to talk today about what is needed in motherhood and in training, not only just for mothers today, but for everybody. Everybody can use the word of God. Whoever is directed to you, glean from that word of God. Let's look at Isaiah 33, 6. Isaiah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Chapter 33, verse 6. It says that... Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The key to this treasure is the fear of the Lord. The wisdom and knowledge you get is of the Lord. Everything that, that, that is a blessing in your life is of the Lord. It's in the word of God. When you need wisdom and you need knowledge, go to the word. Run to the word. When you're running to the word, it's like you're running to Jesus himself. Say, I run to you, Lord, and you run to the word, and he speaks to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So now that we are, we're living in a time of very much, um, in a very gray area. We used to live either black or white, either you're sin or you're not sin. You're in sin or you're not in sin. No gray areas. 
We live in compromised morals. And our children are being raised in this world of compromised morals. I was reading uh, just recently last week here that um, in the United States, I th in Chicago, Illinois, of course, where they're having, you see the fruit of that, there's so much crime. They are teaching, they have decided to teach kindergartners sexual education. They're going to depict little pictures and writing what sex education is about. And sex education taught outside of the house of God can't be good. It's going to be very secular. And you know that there's always uh, uh, the, the pulling of, uh, of the gay agenda. The gay agenda is to, to uh, stop the teachings of the church. Very simply put, in a nutshell, it's to stop the teachings of the word of God. The gay agenda is anti-Christ. So wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. You say, how, well, how am I going to live? How am I going to raise children in this day and age? Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. That's why there's hope in the way. The way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can't let our children get away with anything that's in the gray area. We have to get, get, be ship shape. We need to uh, uh, start uh, uh, walking more in the fear of the Lord. We can't just turn our eye and just pretend that's not there. You have to confront evil straight in the face. Hallelujah. And we're getting the church of, uh, the, of God, the, the ecclesia, the church, is having to come to a time to where you're going to have to get bold in the word of God. You have to not fear those. Well, she's a Bible thumper. Well, thumping the Bible is good for you, isn't it? It was good for me. It brought me to where I am today. But see, the Bible says uh, what is good is being looked at as evil. And what is evil is looked at as being good. The Bible says it. And guess what? We're living in that time. But the wisdom and knowledge of God, it's the strength of your salvation. It's your strength. You have to run to the word. You have to breathe the word. You have to meditate and get in it. Put a CD of the word on when you're driving. Put a CD on at night when you're falling asleep. Put it on your uh, uh, iPad and iPod and everything that you have to get the word in. We've got to get the word in us because it's the only way that's going to help us in these last days. Hallelujah. Well, since it's Mother's Day, let's go to Proverbs 14. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get the preach on here. Glory to God. But I feel a strong anointing. By the time you leave here, I want you guys to be so pumped up with the word of God and ready to be a giant slayer. Hallelujah. Proverbs 14, 1a. I like when translation says that the wisest of women, the wisest of all women builds her house. You want to know a wise woman? It's one that builds her house. I have the New King James Version. It says, the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her own hands. That's why wisdom is important. Wisdom is important. You need to build your house upon the rock. You need to use wisdom to build your house. You know, your household is an institution. It's like running a business. Working in your finances, you got to know every day what your balances are, what's coming in and what needs to be paid. It's uh, your own corporation. Your company. House Incorporated. That's yours. You don't have to be married. You don't have to be a mother. But you have a household. Even if you're single, you have a household. And you build your house as well, if you're a gentleman. So a wise woman builds her house. So let me tell you something about a house. Let's look at Psalms 128. Psalms 128, just a few pages over, verse 3. And I like this. This is good. It says, uh, this is to you, men. Those that um, are believing for a wife or those that have a wife. <laughs> Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. See where the woman belongs? 
in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants around your table. Now, what does olive mean to you? In biblical sense, olive trees, olives, the anointing oil, the anointing, the oil of anointing is your children. Your children are anointed. They're pure and they're innocent. And the Bible talks about, of them like olive plants. So you got to take care of those olive plants. You, you know, the Bible says that, it says uh, in Proverbs 27, 23, that you have to be diligent to know the condition of your flocks. You have to make it your business to find out what your children are being taught, what they're into, and who they're having friends with. There's a horror, I hate to say this, but for the, for the sake of teaching, here in Oklahoma, somewhere, there, there was uh, uh, first grade, kindergartners, I think they were kindergartners, to where a little boy said in the bathroom, another little kid pulled his pants down and did something really bad. It's, it's so yuck, yuck. The worst of what you think of. Five years old. It's a horrible spirit. That kid brought that spirit from his home into the school and deposited onto this other kid. Five years old. That's how we have to guard our children. Be diligent. Be diligent. You have to cover your kids with the blood of Jesus all the time. You have to walk in good morals. You know, you can't even be caught in a room by yourself with a kid anymore. You know, children's church workers have to be screened. You know, we saw Lakewood Church growing up. We grew up in Lakewood Church. And Lakewood Church have went, went through many sorrows uh, because of children's church workers. That's where they, they, were, they were very trustworthy, but now then you had to start doing background checks. That is sad. In a house of God, everyone's supposed to walk in holiness. And, 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 and there was a lot of things, that, uh, 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 hurtful things that happened uh, at Lakewood that you'll never hear of. But see, we have to be diligent to know the state of, our, of your flocks. Your children are like olive plants. How do you take care of these plants? How do you take care of this tree? Let's look at Psalms 1. A few pages over. Psalms 1. You know this, but in the context of where there's hope for a tree. Think of that. There's hope for a tree. Let's read um, all the way to 3. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Do you know there's a lot of Christians that are sitting in the seat of the scornful? Scornful are people that are making fun of the gospel, that are making fun of the good things of God, that are making fun of the good. And, and you, if you, you don't say anything. When you don't say anything, you're like taking part of it because you're not taking a stand. Hallelujah. So you don't follow the advice of, a, of the wicked. Blessed are you when you walk in the counsel, uh, when you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, but when you're walking in the counsel of the godly. Yes. The godly. Hallelujah. So there's wickedness out there, and we can't just put up with that wickedness. Nor can we sit in the seed of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And is in his law he meditates day and night. He ponders. He ponders. He ponders. Well, this employee did this and this. Hmm. I wonder about that. The word of God says this. Hmm. Should I tell them? Should I tell them? We need to warn one another when there's something going on that's not right. If you have a friend that's messing around with their neighbor's wife, you need to bring that to light. But you know what? People say, well, I don't want to get involved, and I'll turn away. If we had more people to make, taking a stand for righteousness, you know, people will be more aware, like, oh, I better straighten out. Hallelujah. We've had to have couples that say, you don't live together. We had to sit down couples and say, don't live together. That's not from God. Don't live together. The word says, 
that you're not supposed to have premarital sex. And they get mad at us, but you know what? We're not going to compromise the word. We're going to say the right thing and do the right thing. Hallelujah. Pray for boldness in the name of Jesus. You know, don't put up with that. Don't put up with that. Hallelujah. It says that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You plant it. My footnote says by the channels of water. Channels. I don't know about you, but I, I know what the Houston Ship Channel is like. And for, for them to have the big old ships full of cargo, it has to be deep water. Deep water. Hallelujah. So he shall be like a tree planted by that deep water, that rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not or never wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. You can prosper in good morality and holiness and godliness and goodness in this last day. You can. People give up. Oh, well, there's evil all around me. What am I going to do? No, you can prosper as long as your tree is planted and washed by the water of the word. And you're planted in the house of God and your roots are growing deep. And when the storm comes, guess what? Your roots are deep. When the storm comes, we've had some storms. Storms are not good. The only good that can come out of a storm is that it will build character in you if you don't give up. How many of you have gone through a storm? All you have to do is read our testimony (laughs) with my son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't really like those speed racing motorcycles, but this last accident that got put on on TV was his third. (laughs) And it's been by the mercy of God. I was looking at it as I studied this, and I just start crying all over again. (laughs) When I think of the goodness of the Lord. But, you know, that was a challenge of my faith. Am I going to fall apart like, oh, no. You see on there, we both pray like, you want to pray? Let's pray. My heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. I'm not going to give in to that sorrow that the devil tries to put on you. The devil wants to get you down all the time. He wants, to, he wants you to be under his feet and step. He wants to step on you. Well, that's wrong. We're to have him under our feet. Hallelujah. And smash his head every chance we get. Tell him the word. Look what your destiny is, devil. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. So this trees, these trees, these olive plants, your children. Oh, plant them by the rivers of water. Nourish them with the word of God. Oh, look at Jeremiah 17. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17, a little bit behind Psalms. Psalm, uh, excuse me, uh, Jer- Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. It said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when he heat comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor, any, nor will cease from yielding fruit. So when you're spreading those roots by the water, by the river of water, by that word of God, you don't have to fear. You don't have to fear when the heat comes. You'll still be green when everybody else is, uh, is dried up. You don't have to be anxious. You're not going to be anxious in a time of recessions. Yeah, me and Pastor Robert have gone, lived through a couple of recessions, and we're still blessed. In the middle of a reception, recession, we bought our first house. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that doesn't mean anything because your roots are planted. You don't have to be anxious in the year of drought. You don't have to be anxious because anxious is worry. Worry brings fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. 
And you're going to be yielding fruit as long as you're constantly in the word. Constantly in the word. Feeding off of the word. Hear the word. Breathe the word. Live the word. Sleep with the word. Because it's spirit and it's life. The word of God is alive. Look at verse 10. It says, I, the Lord, I search the heart. I test the mind. The most secret part. Like some, the, some Bible translation says, the kidneys. Do you know the function of a kidney? Jason knows. Hallelujah. Congratulations, he passed a, an EMS test. Hallelujah for certification. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. And let me tell you, that's some difficult stuff. Having to say if they're passed out, what, you know, the lungs and oh my goodness. It's a blessing of God. So the kidneys filter. They filter the bad stuff. And, and you know, you were, we're supposed to drink a lot of water, right? So that that water can clean the kidneys. Can clear out the toxins and get rid of it. And here, uh, that, that, uh, uh, the mind here in verse 10, I, the Lord, I search the heart, I test the kidneys. I test the mind, it says. Those, uh, those things, those toxins and, and, and the secret parts of your mind. And I want to clean them with water. Doesn't that make sense? How, how the, the, the Lord uses that word kidneys. It's, he's clean. He wants to clean out the stuff, clean out the gunk. Even to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. We're all going to bear fruit, whether it's good or bad. We're all planting seed in everything that we do. That's why we got to plant good seed. I feel bad. I tell Pastor Robinson, oh, such and such is they're planting some bad seed, and it's going to come up if they don't deal with it. So we've got to plant good seeds, the fruit of our doings. He searches the heart. He tests the mind. He's testing the mind. Now, let me tell you something. Someone said, well, God will put you through a test. God doesn't test you. You put your own self in a test. He's watching you, how you endure the tests of the world. Some people think that, well, God put a test in me. God put me to the test. No. We live in a world that's the world itself is a test. And we put ourselves in our own test. And God is in heaven just waiting for you to call out to him, to call out his word to him. The angels are waiting for you to put them to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, a tree planted by water will spread out its roots. We got to take care of the roots. We got to take care of our children's roots. We got to take care that they don't get rooted in the wrong way, in the wrong place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6. How do we take care of these children? How do we take care of these roots? How do we take care of, uh, of our, our lives, our mind, our heart, our kidneys? Let's go all the way back to the Old Testament. The heart of God. The whole Bible is his heart and mind. The whole Bible. Deuteronomy 6.6. 6. Let's start with four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Do you remember what Proverbs 27, 23 says? Be diligent to know the state of your flocks. Teach them diligently to your children and talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk in the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You, should write, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. There's something I think it's called the mezuzah that's a, a, a blessing. All ye that come in this house, it's on the doorposts. You, they technically had to do physically something like that. The Israelites were always having to give, be given a sign or a symbol to remember, not to forget the Lord God. So you have to teach the word of God diligently. You, how is the biggest way you're teaching your children is by your own actions. 
If they see what you're passionate about, they'll be passionate about that same thing. If they say that, that you're a, a, a taker and not a giver, well, they'll be taking, always wanting, wanting, and that they're, they're not giving. They see that you're a giver, they're a giver. If they see that, that you watch TV all day, then they'll watch TV all day. If they see that you get real excited by, by recreation and that it just really lights up your face and, oh, we're going to do this and play base or whatever, you know, they, they do the same thing. Hallelujah. I know because I've lived through many, many households. The children follow after their parents. So what, when you teach the word of God diligent to you, to your children, you know, you're, you're fulfilling a command that the Lord says to you. That's part of verse 4, you loving the Lord your God with all your heart. You love the Lord with your heart, so you want your children to love the Lord with all their heart. You want your children to love the Lord with all their soul, which is their mind, their will, and their emotions. That's what we're dealing with now today, the mind, the will, the emotions. So when you show them loving God in their mind, loving God with their wills, loving God with their emotions, and with all their strength, you're obeying a command of God. You're taking care of that olive plant. Hallelujah. John 6, 63, you can turn there if you want to. But it says that the word of God is spirit. And it's life. It says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. Everything we do in the flesh, it profits nothing. The fleshly things, uh, you know, going for recreation and entertainment, that doesn't profit anything. There's nothing wrong with it. It has to have its balance. The things that are, are an obsession to you, it has to be uh, put under the blood, and it has to have its balance. You need to be uh, 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 obsessed with holiness. <laughs> Glory to God. But not crazy and radical and fanatical. No, no, no. Just loving God in the most purest, wonderful, beautiful way. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. His word, the word of God, the Holy Bible is spirit and it's life when you speak it you're speaking life when you speak the scriptures you're speaking power when you speak the word of god to your children you're giving them the power that'll benefit them for the rest of their life and they'll not forget it hallelujah, hallelujah. The word of God is constantly producing and working though you can't see it like you can't see the wind, but his word is working. The word of God is spirit. Can you see the Holy Spirit? Can you see him standing? You can feel him. You can sense him. You know when he's here. But our natural eye can actually see a figure like a spooky ghost that they try to do in Halloween. The word of God is spirit and it's life. It brings life just like the water. The wa rivers of water brings life wherever it goes. It brings life and it sprouts. Here in Oklahoma, there's a lot of like hills that you could look over the plains. A lot of red dirt. And when you see the, all the red dirt, and all of a sudden you'll see a little grove of trees. And then you'll see nothing else. And then a little grove, not very many. Well, wherever those grove of trees are, you know there's water. And sure enough, there's a little creek. Oklahoma is uh, famous for creeks. There's creeks everywhere. <laughs> so you can tell where there's water because the trees are growing there. The trees drink of the water, the nutrition. The trees aren't parched like the rest of the land. The trees, the roots will look for water. They go, uh, they go under the ground. They're looking for water, drinking of the nutrition. Hallelujah. Oh, rabasi, karabasi. So we need to speak the spirit of God. It's life. Let's look at Proverbs 22, 6. Glory to God. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so good, Father. You love us so much. You teach us your word. Hallelujah. Proverbs 22, 6. This is part of the watering. Train up a child in what? 
the way. Train up. I have in my Bible, I put in parentheses, the way. Train up a child, a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The way is God's way. Hallelujah. The way, the word way translated is a word Derek, D-E-R-E-K. That means road, journey, manner, direction toward, toward and moral actions. So we're to train up our children in the way of moral actions, good moral actions, the manner of which he should go, the road, the journey of the way of the master. Who is the way? John 14, 6. John 14, 6, 6 says that Jesus is the way. Hallelujah. Let's look at it. Let's put it before our eyes. I was just going to quote it, but putting it before our eyes is just another eye gate, our ear gate and our eye gate. We put it in, and then we speak it out. That's our, our mouth gate. Hallelujah. Jesus said to him, I am the way. You can put parentheses there. The way. We belong to those of the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. He is the way. We were to train our children in the way, in him, in Jesus. Hallelujah. Korabasi. The first time the way was being spoken of, and let's look at that in Acts 9. When Paul... Paul hated the Christians. Paul was a Christian killer. He persecuted Christ like the Lord describes. Paul 9.2. Well, let's look at 9.1. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any of who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So he was looking for the Christians. He was looking for those that followed the way. We know that um, something happened to him. He was still breathing threats and murder. You know, he killed many, many people that loved the Lord. Verse 3 says, and he, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, somebody say, suddenly. A light shone around him from heaven. Can you, have you, has that ever happened to you? You're going about doing your business and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost just comes on you. Or a light bulb turns on and you're like, that's how to fix this. That's how I'm going to do. That's a decision I'm going to make. Suddenly, it says that a light shone, that light (laughs) <laughs> oh, shun around him from heaven, and he fell to the ground, and he ber- heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then he said, who are you, Lord? So the way changed Paul, and then he became Saul. Let's look at, uh, let's turn some pages over to The same acts, but in chapter 18, this is what happened to those breathing threats that Paul gave. Acts 18, 26. Ooh, this is good. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 18. So um, here, here it is. It says, so he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Hallelujah. See, see, Paul is already converted. He returned to Antioch. You know, uh, he spent time there. And then there was, uh, he met Apollos, an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures. You know, Aquila and Priscilla uh, uh, knew uh, all about God. And 
and of the, the great things that Paul was preaching. And so he said, well, let's teach. It says, this man had been instructed, in verse 25, in the way, again, the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. So when you go deeper into the things of God, deeper than your salvation, deeper than, than uh, 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 the basic things, the foundation of the Lord, you go deeper into the way. The Holy Spirit then shines that light in you, and you start climbing up another level. Ooh, how many of you enjoyed Wednesday? We climbed up a spiritual level big time. Complete silence. It was over 30 minutes for sure, minimum 30 minutes. We couldn't get, I briefly looked up and everyone was on the floor. It was awesome. So we're coming up another level, hallelujah. So Quill and Priscilla wanted to teach that to Apollos, and they took him aside and explained to him the way, the way of God more accurately. The higher you go in, in trying to seek God and his word more, it's more accurately explained to you by the Holy Spirit. More accurately explained to you the ways of the Spirit. Why does this happen? How does this, how do we do that? Lord, how am I going to do this? Uh, uh, show me, show me. And he tells you accurately what to do. That's the way. Hallelujah. Oh, back to the way of uh, uh, giving wisdom to our children. Let's go back to, let's go back to Proverbs 29. Let's go to Proverbs 29, 15. You know this. But we, we've got to preach this more and more. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now the young mothers are absent this morning, but we've we got to make sure they get, this, uh, they get this teaching. Hallelujah. It says, Proverbs 29, 15, the rod and rebuke give wisdom. Remember, wisdom and knowledge are the stability of your times. We need to give that wisdom and stability of our times, pass it on to our children. The rod and rebuke, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Now, the rod is discipline. Just an old-fashioned spanking is the most wonderful thing. You don't need Ritalin. You don't need uh, uh, to, to get your kids off of sugar uh, with whatever pills they're replacing it with. Uh, just a good old-fashioned spanking with the rod. Ask any of our kids. We had a rod, uh, and the, the, the Pastor Robert wrote, rod of correction on it. And one day, Jason hit it. We never did find out. What did you ever do with it? We never have found it to this day. So Pastor Robert had to go find something outside a little switch or something to replace that. But see, the, the di that's discipline. The Bible says you don't love, love your children, you don't discipline them. Now, that is different than punishment. Punishing your children is, is punishing for, for them doing something wrong. But when you discipline your children for doing something wrong, you are teaching them the way. What does the Lord say about this? Children, we tell you we are disciplining you. I'm going to spank you because the Lord says to correct you and teach you the right moral thing to do. When you spank your children, you're teaching them in the way. It's a discipline, not a punishment. Not a punishment. Somebody was telling me, uh, I, I've heard this about three or four times already. When some mothers get so frustrated, they hit their kids over the head with the Bible. I hear this all the time. They, you know. <laughs> so that kid grows up like, I don't know, a loving father. God is a God that strikes people with lightning. You know, they don't know the love, the love of our Abba Father. Hallelujah. They, became, they have a fear, an unwholesome fear of the Lord, not a reverential fear, but they're afraid of the things of God. We have to teach our children to fear the Lord reverently. We have to, to uh, uh, train them about that reverential fear. Let's look at verse uh, 17, and we're going to go back to that reverential fear. 
Verse 17 says, correct your son and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give delight to your soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go, to, let's go all the way back to Ephesians 6 in reference to that. Ephesians 6, 4. It says that, and you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. You know, some mothers have to be mother and father to their children. Divorcees, uh, uh, widowers, they have to be a mother and a father to their children. You have to uh, uh, go to the word all the time. You know, we're not to pick on our kids and slap them in their face just, at a, you know, just to satisfy our emotions that we're irritated. That's provoking them to wrath. But it says, bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Train your children to have the reverential fear of God. Train them to know how to love God, how to praise God. What the difference is of praise, which is loud and dancing, and, you know, and worship, which is quiet. Say, like, quiet down, quiet down. Get before the Lord. Teach them how to kneel down, how to be quiet before the Lord. It's all a training, 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 training. Hallelujah. So we have to do that because that's the wisdom of God. That's taking care of what he says to take care of your olive plants. They're your anointing. They're your responsibility. Now let's go back to Job 14. Hallelujah. Job 14 says, and we're going to continue reading, for there is a hope for a tree. If it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease. And though its roots may grow old in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of water. It will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. That scent of water of the word causes those branches in the tree to flourish, causes those olive plants to start flourishing. Even, even it's not saying a, a rain cloud full of water. It's just the scent of water. Does anybody know what it's like to smell rain? It smells fresh. The smell of rain. Companies have tried to bottle that up in, in, in scents, but you can't quite duplicate the smell of rain. It says the scent of water. Even that little bit of the word of God causes those roots to grow. That, that, that scent of water is that, that perception, smell of, of the Holy Spirit. Gives you a perception of the Holy Spirit. The smell of the Holy Spirit. That scent of water will cause those branches that are dry and need a drink of water to bud. When you think that uh, if you have a, a grown-up children... And they have not walked in the way, but in another way, don't give up because there's hope, the Bible says. There's hope for a tree. And if your tree is that, that olive plant, that olive tree, see, the olive trees don't stay a plant. They grow up to be a big tree. And they produce the olives. They produce the oil. So there's always a flourishing and a growing and a branching out. And in that olive, has anybody ever had an olive with a seed in it? it? Has a seed. That's reproduction. Hallelujah. So there's hope for a tree. Even if it's cut down, it'll sprout again. If you've ever cut down a tree, sometimes even when you grind the stump, here and there a little bitty shoot will sprout up. I've seen that over and over many times. Even though you think your relationship with your children has died. Even if you think there's no hope in your relationship with any one of your parents. If you think there's no relationship with a lost son or lost daughter. 
your hope is not lost. It will sprout again if you speak the word over that situation. Find a scripture. I remember finding a scripture that says that my children will be well taught of by the Lord and their well-being shall be great. It's a promise of God for me personally because I found it. It's your promise too. Your children will be well taught of by the Lord. And you know the Lord teaches people out there in the trouble and trials they put their own self in. And they finally come to themselves and say, I need the Lord. You keep sending out, sending the angels to go forth and minister to your child. Send laborers their way. And sooner or later, you're going to see that fruit. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Now, when, when you say, uh, please lift me up in prayer, please lift me up in prayer, someone says, please pray. We're not going to be praying for the same thing over again. We are going to thank God for what that first prayer said. And now when we say we're lifting you up in prayer, that's a Thanksgiving prayer. We thank God that Betsy and Billy are coming home. These missing children, there's too many missing children, too many missing teens. There needs to be a ministry specifically in every church praying for the missing children. The missing teens, the missing people. There's hope. There's hope. You saw on the news these three girls that were kidnapped for 10 years. There was a hope. Somebody out there was praying. And when they, especially when they come from ungodly households, it's people like you and me that look at the news and are interceding. You rule on this earth. Your prayers rule. You bind up the enemy and you release the angels. You release the word of God. The world needs you. We need to bring these children home. We need to stop laws that are killing babies. We need to stop uh, uh, these laws that are empowering a, 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 um, an unholy agenda. There's hope for a tree. There is hope even at the scent. You know, the Bible says just a little bit of faith. So just a little bit of water is that scent of water. Just a little bit. The Lord gave me a vision one day. He showed me a, a, a beautiful fields and fields full of beautiful flowers of every color. And I can see that right now. The, the sun was shining on the flowers, and they were so beautiful. Every color, the blues were vibrant, the yellow, the magenta, the pink, beautiful flowers. And then he said, look over here to this field. And I saw that field, and they were dry where flowers once were before planted, were just dry little stumps. And the Lord says, just a little bit of water and a little bit of dirt. And he showed me his hand, that little precious shoot, that little precious sprout, just a little bit of water. That's all it takes, and they'll all come back to life. And I give that to you. Give that little bit of water out there to those flowers that are dried. Even when it feels like the flowers are dead, there's still hope. There's still hope. Hallelujah. There's still hope in Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 11, 12. Matthew. Hallelujah. Talks about a praying woman. Ooh, glory to God. Thank God for the mothers on Mother's Day. A mother will never give up on her child. Ooh, a mother will kill for her child. (laughs) Don't you mess with a mother's child. Watch out. Hallelujah. Have you ever been by a nest where that mother come peck at you? Leave her babies alone (laughs) in that nest of eggs. Hallelujah. Uh, Matthew 11, 12 says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. We got to take our 
authority in the word of God. And we have to be strong in our faith. And we have to take some things by force. And we have to pull down strongholds. And we have to remember who we are in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, God's kingdom come. His will be done. You are ambassadors of the kingdom. You can't let the world rule. You can't let the world uh, teach your children ungodly things. You can't let yourself even go in the gray areas. You got to, you got to uh, bring the bad down, to bring every evil thing down, bring down strongholds. You got to tear them down. And sometimes you got to get violent. You got to get violent because uh, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent. The violent take it by force. We take it by force. When you sit down and do nothing, then nothing will be done. We got to do something. We got to do something. We have the word of God. There's hope in the way. There's hope in the way. There is a way that leads to life. Hallelujah. There is a way. Glory to God. Oh, when you see that there's a dryness in your family, and there's a dryness even in your spirit, when there's a dryness, you speak the word of God and wash it by the watering of the word. I, I, won, I won my husband over, by, but the Lord told me to wash him with the water of the word. He said, don't invite him to church. I was preaching the gospel and I had this ministry going and everybody's husbands are getting saved and everybody's getting healed. And, and my husband was just, you know, <laughs> like he said, <laughs> you know, he's just, you know, do whatever you want to do. But, you know, uh, uh, but the Lord said, wash him by the water of the word. And I started speaking the word over him. And I started uh, uh, just uh, uh, claiming nothing but the word of God. Not my own words. Like, God, I want him to come to church with me. No, those are my own words. But I said, uh, Lord, your word says that you perfect that which concerns me. And then he started teaching me. He said, quietness, quietness is your strength. You start telling me scriptures about quietness and to shut my mouth up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he did say wisdom. It's the stability of your times. So how to use wisdom. You don't think, no one would think, don't invite your husband to church is wisdom. But it was God's wisdom. He told me, don't invite him. He's had enough of church. His family made him go to church. He's like, when, he, when we got married, he's like, yeah, I'm free from church. Woo and that's when our problems started. <laughs> but look at him now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So of all the women that, that, that their husbands uh, uh, came, got saved, well, then they wanted to come to church too. And, I, and I, I didn't give up, get discouraged saying, well, I wish my husband would come to the Lord. Everybody else's husband came to the Lord. No, because I have hope. I have hope that at the scent of water, that the little bit, the little bit that maybe he, he, he would see my scriptures on the mirror, that little scent of water will bring him to the Lord. And it did. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. One of the songs that we sang is that made the dry bones live. You know, the dry bones, you got to prophesy to those dry bones, those dry, dead places that have no rivers of water flowing through it. The Hebrew word for prophesy is naba, N-A-B-A. It means to bubble or flow forth, to gush, to flow, to boil up or over. So when you say, oh, dry bones, hear the word of God. You prophesy unto them and you say, bubble forth, gush, flow, boil over. You speak to those dry places in your life. You speak to those uh, uh, to the lives of your children that are not actively worshiping God. You speak to the, the lives of your children. You think that your job is done by raising them when they're little? There is a, um, a habit out there that when they're 18, get them out. That's when they need you the most. They can't leave the home at 18 years old. There's too much. They're too vulnerable. They're not wise. They're not wise. They don't have wisdom. They have street sense. That's for survival. 
my heart uh, uh, goes out to those that, that, uh, that are let out of the home too early. Hallelujah. Oh, let's pray. Oh, dry bones, we prophesy to you. We speak the word of God to come upon you. There's hope in the way. You are the way. Your ways is the truth. Oh, you are the life, Father God. I pray that every mother, every parent here, Everyone that is going through dry season, know that there's a hope. There's a hope. Doesn't matter how dry and dead the roots are, there's hope for a tree. Will not be cut off. Oh, Oh, that we wash our situations with the water of the word. That we show our children, our family the way. That our lives demonstrate the way. Oh, Rahasei. I speak life to those dryness, dry areas. I speak life to those dry roots i speak life in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name oh there may be even some places in our own life in our own mind in our heart oh that, that perhaps we didn't uh, uh, uh we weren't raised in the right way that we thought was right they were, they, we were raised by uh, a parent uh, that had maybe, um, that was alcoholic or psychological uh, problems or just evil or engulfed in witchcraft or whatever it was. And we speak healing to our minds right now. We speak healing to the memories in the name of Jesus. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in our minds, Lord. Let your water wash through our kidneys the toxins uh, that have crippled our walk before you. Wash out all the bad stuff, the religiosity. I rebuke you, spirit of religion, that causes people not to walk forward into a higher level. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit of religion, I break your power. You have no authority over the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Oh, we wash out of the purity, the purity of the word of God. We desire to come up to a higher level, Father God. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your miracles. Thank you, Father God, that you're bringing that lost one back. You're bringing him back. You're bringing her back. Oh, those families, oh, that their children had to be taken away from them. Because they're full of drugs and they're full of bad habits. Father, I pray that, uh, that they rise up from the mud and they're washed with the water of the word, Father God. I pray for every dysfunctional family now in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, angels go forth and protect the children, Father God. The children that are in harm's way in Jesus' name. And we speak to those that are lost. You come out. You come out. You come out from being lost. Be revealed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father, for the many mothers that are here, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you will teach them your way. Teach us your ways, O oh Lord. Teach us your way. La sete di la hasotoriende. Undara hasata da da da. It doesn't matter if that stump is dry, it will produce. Take hold of that word. It will produce. Thank you, Father. Iutana hase di la la basoko. I thank you, Father God. I see the word closure. 
Father God, you desire that we settle it in your word. That your word speaks to each and every one of our situations. And that you're bringing closure in that situation. Never again will we grieve. Because grieving is part of the root of fear and anxiety. The root of fear is death. But we speak life. We speak faith. Our closure is faith in the word. Faith that your word is true. Father, you said that you are pleased with our faith. And we wash every situation with the water of the word. I thank you for your way is the best way. Our ways are not working. Your way is the best way. I thank you, God, that there's hope in the way. In Jesus' name we pray. We give you glory and we give you honor and we thank you, Lord. I thank you.